Whatever it is. Oh god, oh my god, oh my god. It's tiny, I think. Huh. I had my drag back top, I thought it was so big. That was awesome. I've been throwing a swim bait for the last two miles and this, this little mud cut looks so good. So I just took a, one of the new little Picasso chatter baits and a little Kitek trailer. Because we're watching these fish, we're watching these fish popping on bait sporadically. It seems like they're always in these little cuts. So we just found this little cut and we threw the chatter bait in there. Kind of woke the day back up. So it's small, but it, it was a fun bite. Well, we came out here to, to fish some swim baits, but it seems like every time we pass these little mud pockets, we see a fish boil or something. And we, we, we've been talking about it every time we see a fish boil, and then we're kind of hard-headed and sticking outside with the swim bait. So we came around here, and we keep seeing like another fish boil. So I thought, let's the chatter bait. The water's dirty. It seems like they're, they're busting on bait. So we just put a, I just put on a shad-colored chatter bait and we're just running it through this dirty water, especially wherever we see these birds. It seems like wherever there's birds, they're pushing these little bait balls around. And it seems to be working. Um, and it doesn't seem to be a, a whole rhyme or reason just get in the pocket. Some of the fish have been right on the bank and some of them are coming right out the center. So I think they're just roaming around on bait. It's, uh, it's March, end of March now. And uh, I think most of the fish are pre-spawn or just starting the spawn, but the water, since it was so un abnormally warm, it's, uh, I think the fish, are, the bait's up, so the fish are in that pre-spawn spawn thing, but they're also crushing bait, so we've got them kind of where we want them. And I'm just, this is a, a new bait by Picasso, it's their new chatterbait. Uh, the details on these things are beautiful. I mean, it's very rare you see a chatterbait with a, with a head and the skirts. I put a Kitek on the back to kind of finish it off. It, uh, the, the couple things I love about this bait, you can burn it and it won't roll or die and you can roll it really slow. It never fouls. It seems to be unfoulable. They've got a, a new connection I've never seen used before from the head to the blade. It's, it's allowing it not to foul. So functionally it's awesome and then looks it's awesome too. So it's kind of a win-win. So we're gonna stick with it for a little while longer. I'll kind of run this pocket, couple more pockets, see if we're onto something. If not, we'll go back to the swimmer. But we might be onto something now, so we'll keep going for a little longer. You know, when I fish chatter baits, most of the time I, I get most of my bites when you're, you're winding it, and kind of like a spinner bait, and I always like to to jerk it or pop it to kind of trigger a bite. And I've been doing that, but it seems like the times I don't are when I'm getting bit. So. Uh, Maybe they, these fish are kind of lazy. The water's getting pretty warm too. For in the March, we're in the 60s. So I'm just giving them a, a, a lazy retrieve. That seems to be what they want. Tomorrow it might have to be ripped and jerked, but today it seems like that super slow, steady retrieve is, uh, is picking them up. And, and I've noticed most of them are coming way off the bank. So I don't know if I'm just going over a bait ball or if they're tracking it forever and then finally committing. But whatever we're doing, we're doing it right. So I'll stick with it. When I'm fishing a chatterbait, there's a few rods that I, that I use, but I think uh, day in and day out, a seven, this is a 7.3 medium heavy, and I found that the tip that it has gives me the right, I can really monitor the vibration with the tip, with the medium heavy tip, and it shuts off pretty fast, so I got plenty of backbone. Uh, reels, I like, a, this, is a, this is actually an iRod prototype. This is the iRod Proton, and this is a 6.5. I'll go all the way up to like a 7.1, maybe even faster in the summer months. Uh, right now the water's still a little chilly, so I was pretty comfortable with a 6.5 and just kind of cruising it. Line, today we're using 15 pound fluorocarbon. Uh, I, I'll use that, or I do enjoy braid too. I, I find I get a lot more feel of a chatterbait when I'm fishing braid. Uh, some guys probably don't agree, but it's, it's worked out great for me in the past, but today the fluoro was, was perfect. We never lost a fish, never had a hassle. I think day in and day out, this setup, you know, a, a good mid Mid-speed reel, 6.5 to 7.1, and a medium heavy rod with a good backbone will cover chatterbaits across the country. All of this is available at Tackle Warehouse. The reel is coming. This is a prototype. That's coming soon. But the rod, the line, the baits, the trailers are all available at Tackle Warehouse. Make sure you check back with us next week for more tips and action back here at Santa Margarita Lake. 
when you're dealing with timber like we've got here at Falcon, these fish can get on what I call pole timber. I slide the nose job on, cup facing forward so it can scoop the water. I slide on my Paycheck Baits punch skirt. It's a brand new vibrating jig by a company called Mullix, and it's called the Lover.